At the dawn of history, in the vast green fields of ancient Rome, there lived a nymph known for her grace and beauty. Her name was Flora, daughter of the lesser gods of the field and spring, whose very existence was a hymn to nature. Her connection to nature was so profound that flowers were said to bloom in her presence alone. She was a creature of the earth whose life was intimately tied to plant growth and rebirth cycles. Flora was of sublime beauty. Her long, wavy hair looked like golden threads woven with rays of sunlight, and her eyes shone with the emerald green of the forests in springtime. Her skin had the soft glow of dawn, and her smile was as radiant as the flower-filled fields on a sunny day. She wore light flowing clothes adorned with petals and leaves, and on her head she wore a wreath of fresh flowers, a sign of her dominion and love for all that grew and bloomed. Flora spent her days dancing through the meadows and forests, caring for every bud and petal with a tenderness that only a nymph of her caliber could possess. Her hands, delicate but filled with a life force, gently caressed the leaves and stems, infusing them with life and energy. The animals of the forest were also her friends and companions. The birds sang in harmony with the soft murmur of her voice, and the creatures of the field gathered around her, attracted by the calm and peace she radiated. Flora saw in each of them a kindred spirit, a companion in the eternal cycle of life. But not only earthly creatures admired Flora. From the heavens, the gods watched with interest this nymph whose love for life was so pure and true. Zephyrus, the gentle god of the west wind, was especially captivated among them. From his aerial realm, he watched Flora dance and play. Something in his heart began to stir, a mixture of admiration and a growing desire to meet this extraordinary nymph. Each day, Zephyr blew gentle breezes across the field, seeking to capture Flora's attention. He created winds that caressed her cheeks and fluttered through her hair as if they were invisible fingers playing a melody of love. The breeze brought the scent of distant lands and the whisper of ancient secrets designed to enchant the nymph. Flora, at first, was oblivious to Zephyr's intentions. She danced among the flowers, completely immersed in her world, where beauty and nature reigned supreme. Gradually, however, she began to notice the constant presence of the breeze. This silent companion seemed to follow in her footsteps. One day, as Flora bent down to smell a lovely flower, Zephyrus used his breath to make the flower bow toward her as if presenting a gift. Surprised and delighted, Flora smiled, and in that instant, Zephyrus knew he had won her heart. With each passing day, Zephyrus' courtship grew bolder. He painted the skies at dawn and dusk with dazzling colors, celebrating Flora's beauty. The clouds moved at his whim, forming figures and patterns that told stories of love and devotion. Captivated by these gestures, Flora found in Zephyr a companion who shared her love of beauty and nature. Together, they began exploring the meadows. Zephyrus led Flora in an aerial dance, where flowers rose to greet them, and trees whispered welcome songs. This courtship, full of beauty and magic, united Flora and Zephyr in a bond of love and transformed the world around them. Flowers bloomed more vigorously everywhere they went, and the fields were filled with colors and fragrances that had not existed before. Nature seemed to celebrate their union, a testament to the power of love and harmony. However, other versions of the story say that Zephyrus abducted Flora to secure her love. The abduction of Flora was considered a symbol of the union of nature and love. The love between Zephyrus and Flora grew daily, reflected in the nature surrounding them. Each time Zephyrus caressed the world with his winds, the flowers seemed to bloom with more strength and beauty as if celebrating their union. As Flora danced in the fields, surrounded by the affection of the west wind, she began to feel a change within herself. A new and radiant energy emanated from her, causing the flowers and plants around her to burst forth with life and color. This phenomenon did not go unnoticed by the gods. Watching from his throne on Olympus, Jupiter marveled at the harmony that Flora brought to the natural world. He then decided to give her an extraordinary gift. Flora would be elevated to the status of goddess, with the power to influence nature and the seasons. From that moment on, Flora became the guardian and protector of all plants and flowers. She was entrusted with tending the gardens and fields and guiding those who worked the land. Her image, surrounded by many flowers and plants, 
became an emblem of fertility and natural growth. Flora's transformation was celebrated both on earth and in heaven. Mortals built her temples and dedicated festivals to her. At the same time, on Olympus, she was received with joy by the other gods. Her figure began to adorn homes and sacred places, becoming a constant presence in everyday life. Under Flora's tutelage, the seasons flowed harmoniously, ensuring that each life cycle was successfully fulfilled. Her presence in Roman mythology became a pillar, a living representation of the cycle of life and rebirth we observe in nature. Every spring, Rome was transformed under the Floralia Festival, a vibrant homage to Flora, the goddess of flowers and spring. This festival was an annual event full of color and joy, attracting citizens from all walks of life to participate. The streets of the city were dressed in a blanket of multicolored flowers. Romans decorated their homes and sacred places with garlands and floral bouquets, creating an atmosphere of festivity and respect for nature. The floral games were the festival's heart, combining spectacles, competitions, and ritual acts. Performers and acrobats filled the streets, while athletes competed in tests of strength and skill. These competitions were enthusiastically followed, and the floral wreaths awarded to the winners were considered a great honor. The religious aspect also played a crucial role. Priests and priestesses performed ceremonies and offered sacrifices to win Flora's favor and secure her blessing on the city's crops and gardens. The population provided flowers and fruits on altars, accompanying their offerings with prayers and songs dedicated to the goddess. The nights of Floralia sparkled with banquets and dances. Music and laughter filled the air as citizens enjoyed exquisite food and selected wine, celebrating life and the beauty of nature late into the night. This festival signaled the planting season's beginning and strengthened community ties, filling people with joy and hope. It was a time to appreciate the Earth's bounty and reflect on the continuous cycle of life. With the end of the Floralia, although daily life resumed its course in Rome, the festival's spirit lingered in people's minds, keeping alive the hope for a fruitful season and the admiration for nature that Flora embodied. As the years passed, Flora established herself as a central figure in various cultural expressions. Her image was adopted in art, where painters and sculptors captured her essence through vibrant and lively representations. In these canvases and sculptures, Flora usually appeared surrounded by flowers, often in full bloom, representing the renewal of nature. Flora inspired poetry and stories in literature. Poets of various eras evoked her as the guardian of gardens and protector of growing nature. Her stories were often used to describe the transition of the seasons, especially the arrival of spring. Flora also played a crucial role in the festivities. Beyond the Floralia in ancient Rome, her influence spread to other cultures and times. In many spring festivals worldwide, echoes of celebrations in her honor can be found, where flowers and fertility rituals occupy a central place. In addition, Flora's image remained present in horticulture and botany. Gardeners and botanists often referred to her as an inspiration for their work, seeing in her figure the representation of the beauty and diversity of plants.